Hello everyone! I spent this past week in the dreaded urban hellscape known as San Francisco, playing the new Pokemon game in my hotel room instead of going to Genesis 8. During that time, I came up with a new video series, so welcome to the first render repair video in which we will analyze the graphics of a game, discuss why it looks unappealing, and how to possibly fix it. There's a whole lot of opinions circulating about the graphical fidelity of Pokemon Legends Arceus, and while they are heavily exaggerated for the most part, we should at least know why the game looks the way it does in order to understand if the criticisms are justified. I'm going to avoid nitpicking, so the main focuses of this video will be Why does this landscape look so barren? Why do these trees in particular look so awful? What's up with these mysterious, disappearing shadows? Why does this grass feel so out of place? Why does the ground look so shiny? And lastly, what's up with that dreaded lake image that is circulating the internet? All this and more coming up in Render Repair, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Before we get into the nitty gritty, I'd like to clarify that I do not think this game looks that bad. Additionally, it's probably the best Pokemon game ever made. This video is to critique the game as a piece of art and inform people why the game looks the way it does. Anyways, let's get to the first item on the list. Why does this landscape feel empty? To put it simply, it's a lack of meaningful foliage landmarks in the distance. The trees cut off too quickly, and we are left with empty looking hills in the distance. As I've discussed in many videos up to this point, removing distant trees is a way to conserve resources so that the game runs faster. But comparing this to a screenshot of Breath of the Wild where there are many trees present, the hardware can clearly handle it. So what's Breath of the Wild doing in order to get this many trees in view? Jasper has a great one minute video going over the trick, but to sum it up, Breath of the Wild replaces distant trees with images known as imposters, so that the game can render hundreds of trees while still maintaining a high performance benchmark. If Pokemon were to utilize this trick as well, the landscape would feel much less empty. It wouldn't be too difficult for them either, as the trees already exist in the game, they are just not being rendered. Speaking of trees, why do these trees look so bad? Compared to other trees in the game, they just look awful. Personally, I'd prefer they removed them entirely and instead used their other tree assets, as they look much nicer. The issue has to do with the harsh lighting difference between the top and the bottom of the leaves. There's a lack of ambient lighting on the bottom side of the leaves, so they become much too dark. The easy solution here is to add some ambient lighting to the leaves so that they don't become too dark. As demonstrated here, the lighting of the sphere becomes much less harsh on the other side when I add to the final output of the color. Moving on to the first real major problem, the entire game is riddled with disappearing shadows. As demonstrated here, the tree shadows disappear when the trees are no longer in view. Why is this the case? Well, in all video games, objects that are not in view of the camera are cold and are no longer rendered in order to conserve resources. This can cause some problems, as objects that don't exist can't cast shadows. Or can they? In game engines like Unity, shadows are handled with something called a shadow map. Every scene is rendered from the point of view of the light sources, and each object that is marked as a shadow caster is seen by the light. The depth of these objects is then written to the shadow map, and when we render the scene from the actual camera view, we check if a point is in shadow by comparing the depth values of the point and the shadow map, and if the depth of the point is greater than the depth of the shadow map, then that point is in shadow. The reason shadows are so expensive is because each scene is rendered multiple times for every light source. The more shadow casters you have, the more expensive this becomes. This method means that shadows of objects outside of camera view still cast shadows as they are seen by the light source even if they aren't seen by the camera. 
The fact that this doesn't work in Pokémon means that they are using a different technique for shadow casting, so it's an engine limitation, meaning I can't give any real solution other than just fix it. Walking around the world, I found that the tall grass felt very awkward and out of place. All of the tall grass is brighter at the bottom of the blades and darker at the top, which makes no sense. This coloring should be reversed to fake ambient occlusion. Additionally, a technique many games employ to make grass feel more natural is having the gradient of the grass converge to the color of the underlying terrain color. For example, this grass from World of Warcraft blends into the underlying terrain. This is very easily achieved, since the grass is already sampling the terrain's displacement map in order to properly place itself on top of the terrain, the grass can also sample the texture of the terrain in order to find out what color is directly beneath it. With the terrain color, you mix it with the grass texture color as the UV coordinates descend, and you get grass that blends with any underlying terrain. This shading style I think would improve the overall appeal of the grass in the game and make it look a bit more natural. Speaking of terrain, why is everything so shiny looking? The ground is always a little shiny, like it's wet or something. I think this is to give the game a bit more of a tune shaded style, but in my opinion, it just looks tacky, especially on the dirt, which should be more of a matte texture. The reason the game looks like this is because the exponent on the specular highlight calculation is too high, resulting in the surfaces of the game looking smoother and thus shinier. As demonstrated here, the surface becomes shinier at a higher exponent value and matte at a lower exponent value. I think that if the game lowered the overall smoothness of the materials in the game, it would look a little less weird. Alright, time for the part of the game everyone is ragging on, the dreaded... Lake Verity. This water looks really awful when looked down on from high up, which is unfortunate since the water elsewhere in the game looks pretty decent, so clearly, the distance is the issue. Before we get into how to solve it, we should learn how games animate water effects to begin with. Like everything in graphics, water animations are another trick of the eye to make you think there's something going on when there actually isn't. Obviously, games are not calculating real-time fluid dynamics. Instead, we utilize a technique known as UV distortion and blending to make water look as though it is moving by making the texture all wishy-washy. This also makes the normal vectors of the surface move, so the specular highlights are animated, which is what we see in the Lake Verity image. Because we are modifying textures, the size of the texture has an effect on the overall animation, which is exactly the issue with Lake Verity. The texture tiles too closely, so the distortion trick becomes too obvious and makes the lake look very unnatural. The water elsewhere in the game looks the exact same, but because it's viewed closely, you can't see the pattern. The reality of the situation here is that this problem isn't solvable. It's the downside of this texture distortion technique. If you lower the tile rate of the texture, then the specular highlighting will become too low resolution and it will look even worse. The only real solution is to increase the resolution of the texture so that it's large enough that you can't notice the pattern. This would result in a considerable memory cost to solve a problem that is only present in one location in the game. When you consider that, it's not worth fixing. Unless, of course, you consider the millions of people on the internet who will cherry pick it in order to rag on the game and act like it's the worst thing ever created while having no idea why it looks like that to begin with. Overall, Pokemon Legends Arceus isn't the greatest looking game on the planet, but it is definitely the best experience Pokemon has to offer so far. I expect the next game in the series to look much better. If you were about to comment, Ace Rolla, why didn't you mention all the low quality textures? 
That's an issue with the Switch hardware itself. If you play on handheld mode, the game looks great, but when it is upscaled to a TV screen, then the textures look much worse. Additionally, while I dislike the game's overall lighting model, it's hard to pinpoint any one reason why it doesn't look too great. There's a lot more I could have talked about, but I didn't have much time to make this video. If you like the idea of this series, let me know, and I'll be sure to make more, but until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.